Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to do a video talking about a new Raspberry Pi 4 case that I just recently got. So this is the Argon 1. It's a aluminum case for the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can kind of see on the back it says it's got an aluminum alloy top, uh, other kind of features like a power by a shutdown button and most importantly it's got uh, fans and thermal management for it. And uh, what else is here on the box? It says it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 4. I think this is pretty funny. <laughs> It says the age is 8 plus. Uh, I don't know too many 8 year olds with a Raspberry Pi 4, but uh, oh well. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what's actually here in the box before we go get it set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this guy up and we'll see what's inside. Hopefully it's pretty simple. Yep, okay, so we've got... Uh, Okay, I guess an instruction manual with uh, telling you, oh, it looks like there's going to be some disassembly required, so maybe this might be helpful. All right, so let's stick that off to the side. And then here's the case itself in a nice plastic sack. There you go. That, oopsie. Okay, all right, so this is a little bit more involved than I thought. Okay, so we've got this. We've got, this is the, um, I believe it's the rerouting, right? So it's, it's got... Uh, ways to change the direction so that all the ports are accessible in the back because as you know with a Raspberry Pi 4 um, most of the ports uh, or some of the ports are on the side as well as the back so they come in these nice static protective cases let's see what's inside some of these this one right here I believe just has whoops just let me just rearrange some of these so it's all in view of the camera uh, okay so here ooh, okay bunch of tiny machine screws and then some 3m tape okay oh these are like little feet i think probably for the for the feet oh is case or anything else in here oh yep yeah, more yeah what are all these okay i have no idea what these are We're, we'll find out later but some little rubbery pieces let's put the packaging on one side all right let's cut out this guy which again like we said is i believe the direction changer for some of the ports so that all the ports can be routed out the back of the case. Let's see, again, this is all very nice and in this static protective bag. Ugh, come on, it's kind of hard to get out. Ah, there we go. Okay, great. Okay, these are just empty bags. This is an empty box, nothing here. Case, okay, oh, this is nice. It comes with a nice protective plastic. It's always fun to peel that off the first time. Okay. So, yeah, I believe this is the base. Here's the top. It's probably going to sit something like that, but okay. So, it looks like that's what you get in the box. So, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the current case that I'm using, see some of the problems, and then we'll go ahead and put our Raspberry Pi 4 into this new Argon 1 case and see how it goes. All right, so here's the current case that I have for my Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, it's it's pretty cheap plastic, uh, and I and I really don't like it too much. You can see it's got ports uh, on both both two sides, so uh, it gives you access to everything, but it's just not very clean. And in fact, it's not very. Uh, oops, see, look at look at that. See, this lid doesn't even stay on. The fit is okay, I suppose, but really, like I said, it's just a, a cheap plastic case, and it doesn't seem to do so well, especially with respect to thermal management. In fact, why don't we boot up a stress test and I'll show you some of the issues with this current case in terms of uh, overheating. Okay, so I'm running a little bit of a stress test right now. So I've got a uh, Mathematica notebook actually on the side. I'm trying to compute eigenvalues of 150 by 150 size matrix, and I'm doing it a whole bunch over and over. So it's basically stressing the CPU of the Raspberry Pi, and I've got it in the old kind of junky case. And you can see here's the problem, right? You can see up here in the top, we're at 80, you know, 90% CPU usage. And if you look up here in the upper right of the screen, we get the temperature warning. So this junky case right now, uh, when we're we're running CPU intensive tasks, we basically get a temperature issue. So I believe you get this thermometer icon to show up on the screen anytime the uh, Raspberry Pi is over 80 degrees Celsius. We can we can check it down here. Um, let's check the temperature. Yeah, right now it's 83 degrees. 85 degrees so it's in the the mid 80 degrees right now when we're running this stress test in this old case so let's go ahead and switch it out with a new case and see if that helps 
All right, so we've got it fully assembled and look, it just looks so much better than the old case, right? It's got this nice aluminum look. Um, let's take a look and here, here's one of the great things. It, all the ports are now on one side of the unit, right? So instead of having some ports coming off the side of the Raspberry Pi 4 and some ports coming off the back, everything is now collected on uh, the back rear of the unit. Um, also, it's kind of neat. There's a, there's a hardware power button. We'll take a look at that in a second. That's a, that's a new addition for this uh, and only specific to this case. Um, there's also access to all the GPIO pins from this magnetic, this is the one part that's a little bit weird, this magnetic latch up here. Uh, you can take it off and have access to all the pins still. So this is pretty darn cool, right? Still has got SD card access. Uh, here's some of those rubber feet that I had to install, but overall it's just a really nice looking case. Um, let's go plug it in upstairs and see how it functions. So look at this. Isn't this so much nicer in terms of cable management, right? All of the cables are coming out of the back. This looks like a nice, clean uh, unit just sitting here by itself. And now here's one of the best parts. We can just turn it on using that hardware uh, power button. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Just click on the power button on the back. Give it a second. And uh, you can see there's a red LED in the front that shows up and hopefully we should see the monitor pop yep the monitors on and it's gonna start booting up right now so give it a second and there it is raspberry and here we go here we go we're up and running all right, so here we are running the exact same uh, stress test, but now with the uh, Argon One case. Um, again, as you can see up here, we've got uh, almost 90% CPU usage, but you'll notice there's no thermometer symbol. And if we go and check the CPU temperature, let's see, oh, right there. Now look at that, 50 degrees, 51 degrees, 52 degrees. Yeah, perfect. So look at this. This is significantly cooler. So the fan is working and actually I'll be quiet. You, you can't even hear the fan. So this is awesome. Uh, I think the case is doing great in terms of uh, improved thermal management. And here's another cool feature on the case. So you remember there was a, there's an actually now a dedicated power button on the back. So I had to uh, run one small script uh, on the terminal, but in the instruction manuals, they give you the exact command to enter into the terminal to basically download a script that will allow um, the power button to operate as well as allow you to control the fan uh, settings. So now uh, what we can do is we can turn off or reboot the Pi using different taps or presses of the power button. So for example, to shut it down if I just push and hold the power button on the back uh, here for a few seconds look at that the Pi shuts down so I don't have to now go and uh, use the soft key buttons I don't have to go hit the start menu and hit shut down I can just use the hard power button on the back all right, so there you have it, the Argon One case for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I got this on um, WaveShare, and it took, uh, it actually only cost me about $20, but um, it did take 45 days of shipping to get here from China. Um, but that being said, I think it was well worth the wait. It seems to perform very well, and I'm pretty darn happy with it. So with that being said, I think this is a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video today, and if so, uh, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me. Uh, continue you making these videos and I hope to catch you at a future video so until I talk to you again I think I'll sign off for now talk to you later bye